it appears that one of President Trump's defenses against impeachment, uh, the fact that it was a perfect call with with no pressure, uh, is not exactly holding up. Uh, Now, the thing is, like I said, the Trump administration is, is saying no quid pro quo, no pressure on Zelensky. It was a perfect call. There was nothing wrong in this. Uh, and Zelensky had felt zero, zero, zero pressure. In fact, they even cite Zelensky uh, as agreeing, oh, no, pressure? No, I felt no pressure whatsoever uh, to do these investigations into Joe Biden, into Burisma, into CrowdStrike. So stop asking, right? Well, it turns out, new report that effectively destroyed that defense, uh, and it comes from the Associated Press. So now... Uh, according to their sources, Ukrainian President Zelensky had privately admitted feeling pressured by the Trump administration to intervene in the 2020 election and that American diplomats had been aware of these concerns. So not only do you have Zelensky feeling pressured, but you have American officials, diplomats that are like, yeah, we we know that there was pressure because we know because he said it, essentially. He admitted it. Uh, now, according to the AP report, you, um, and their sources, American officials earlier this year were briefed on a meeting that Zelensky held in which he expressed concern that President Trump's associates were trying to drag him into American politics with their demands that he launch an investigation into Burisma. The former employer of, voice, uh, of former Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. All right, so, uh, well, congratulations, right? He was dragged into American politics because of Donald Trump. So now Zelensky... Look, I, he's in a tough spot. Let's be honest. So what does he do? Does he admit that he was pressured? Uh, and, you know, uh, basically survive the political fallout of that? Because remember, the whole reason that he went along with Donald Trump, from what I can understand, is that he was worried that that security aid was not going to come through. Remember, Ukraine is feeling a lot of pressure from Russia. Russia came in and annex Crimea. And so they don't want that happening again. So they've been relying on security assistance and aid from the United States in the form of these payments that are passed through Congress. So Congress passed this latest payment. Um, However, the Trump administration had held this up, Uh, Donald Trump personally ordering this being held up so that he can have leverage on Zelensky in order to do these investigations into both CrowdStrike and Burisma, uh, his political rivals. Now, the whole CrowdStrike thing is, of course, to debunk the Mueller report uh, and any sort of suggestion that there was any sort of Russian uh, interference in the 2016 election. He wanted to prove that it was actually Ukraine and that they were helping the Democrats. And so that's the real collusion, right? And so he asked for that. And he also asked for, like I said, that uh, investigation into Burisma in order to try to prove that there's some sort of corruption. Uh, Hey, there is systemic corruption, uh, but nothing that's criminal or actionable on the Trump administration. uh, And that Biden had gotten people fired, uh, prosecutors fired in order to protect himself. And so that he could use that as a political cudgel against Joe Biden in 2020. So there's that, right? And so, Zelensky's like, look, we need the money. So uh, I'm probably, and I'm guessing here, uh, I'm going to kiss his ass in the call. And I'm going to say how great of a president he is uh, and, and, and how awesome and how, how, you know, I stayed at Trump properties when I was last in the United States. And so in the hopes that they will continue to let that aid money flow, because if not, we might be screwed. But also, Zelensky was concerned, like, I also don't want to piss off the left, uh, you know, the Democrats or Republicans, because as of so far, this aid has been bipartisan. And again, it passed easily through Congress. We don't want to make enemies of either side. So we're trying to be apolitical. So what do we do? Do we admit that we did get pressured from Trump and possibly alienate Republicans? Or do we continue to lie and then alienate the other side of the aisle? And so, again, he's in a super, super tough spot. And and that's understandable, right? And so what does he do? What does he do? He's in a no-win scenario. 
thanks in part, of course, to Donald Trump and his ridiculous conspiracy theory, right? So now the AP did say that there were contemporaneous notes in Zelensky's early anxiety about Trump uh, and his interest in an investigation that he expressed during the briefing. Now, those notes, by the way, uh, would be devastating for Donald Trump, especially in the hands of the um, committee that's handling impeachment in the House right now. Uh, it clearly shows, those would clearly show that Trump is lying about Zelensky feeling pressured. Zelensky was feeling pressured, and so that essentially destroys their main argument because, well, it's not pressure. There's no quid pro quo. Uh, and so we didn't do anything wrong, witch hunt, fake news, et cetera. Well, you take that away. Again, we've already shown that uh, Donald Trump would have gotten something in return. Uh, and he very nearly got that public announcement into an investigation into Burisma. Uh, and he would have gotten it if politicians from both sides of the aisle, both Democrats and Republicans, hadn't fi figured out that he was holding that money hostage and demanded that he released it. So they demanded that they release it, and that's why the money flowed. And that's why Republicans now and, and Trump is saying, well, there wasn't a quid pro quo because I didn't get anything in return. But you wanted to, you were going to. Not being able to actually commit the crime, even though you wanted and tried to commit the crime, Look, it, you know, just because you tried and failed doesn't mean you didn't commit a crime. And that's what's going on here. He tried and failed to commit a crime to get quid pro quo or actually use extortion because I hate the term quid pro quo. But and that's what that is. That that's extortion. OK. And so that uh, entire defense has been wrecked. And now the no pressure because there can't be uh, extortion without pressure. Right. Well, now that's gone, according to this report. So this, this is disastrous for Donald Trump. I mean, look, 100%. It was clear that foreign aid was contingent on this meeting, uh, on this public announcement, the meeting uh, between Trump and Zelensky, conditional on this, invest, uh, this announcement into this investigation. And that's what it is. Uh, but again... This is 100% disastrous already. You have uh, disastrous polls out. 70% of Americans, according to the new ABC Ipsos poll, think that what Trump did was wrong. 70%. 51% impeach and remove for this. Now, Republicans, and this is why it's important, Republicans watch these numbers. Uh, and what they're doing for impeachment is if the numbers get bad enough for the president, then they will drop him like a hot potato. But they're really concerned about the cruise. They're not concerned about the law. They're not concerned about, oh, what the president did. What, you know, was it right? Was it wrong? No, they know, they all know it's wrong. But at the same time, they're like, but we're coming out in favor of impeachment and actually doing the vote to remove the president. Will that affect my job numbers? If I vote to remove the president, will my voters vote to remove me? And it all comes down to that political calculation on the part of Republican senators. And if there are enough of them that do flip over to saying, okay, we are going to do the right thing, which kind of a laughable situation when you, if you know Republicans, it is laughable uh, because most of them don't do the right thing. Then, well, you know, if they do though, it's over. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.